So today I was just chilling, minding my own business, when I got a picture of a tweet from Candace Owens that was in response to a Vogue article that featured a man wearing a dress. And her tweet said, there's no society that can survive without strong men. The East knows this. In the West, the steady feminization of men at the same time that Marxism is being taught to our children is not a coincidence. It's an outright attack. Bring back manly men. So how do you think that one went over on Twitter? That's right, you guessed it. Of course, the Twitter mob went hysterical, and the actress Olivia Wilde even commented, and she came with the most epic Twitter burn that represents just the extent of the high level of intellectual discourse that we've seen on Twitter these days. She writes, you're pathetic. Burn. Elijah Wood, who played Frodo on The Lord of the Rings, he even jumped in on the action. He said, I think you've missed the definition of what a man is. Masculinity alone does not make a man. Now this is slightly off topic, but I would just be curious as to what he would say does make someone a man today. And I mean that seriously, really. What could he say today that people won't object to or get instantly triggered by? If our no-no spots don't make us men, if our chromosomes don't make us men, if human biology doesn't make us men, and if masculinity doesn't make us men, then what possibly makes us men? But anyways, my favorite response comes from an article that was published by MSNBC titled Candace Owens mocks Harry Styles for wearing a dress. Did she forget about Jesus? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So if this is your first time here, go ahead and hit that sub button and meme team. You guys ready? Then let's go. So let's go ahead and read the relevant parts of the article. The article starts off by saying, the presidential election might be over, but Trump surrogates aren't done playing the man card to energize their base. After attacking president-elect Joe Biden for the size of his mask and implying that protecting others made him less of a man, they've moved on to being provoked by another piece of cloth, a dress. Yeah, here we go. After pop icon Styles posed on the cover of Vogue wearing a ball gown, conservative radio host Trump endorser Eric Erickson tweeted, Biden gets elected by promising a return to normal, then the left goes all in on men in dresses. Which I agree is not the smartest comment. Anyways, just to prove that women can also perpetuate patriarchy despite being disproportionately harmed by it, right-wing extremist Candace Owens followed up by tweeting that there is no society that can survive without strong men and that we need to bring back manly men. The truth is that throughout history, men have always sported so-called dresses. And not that it matters, but most of them would be considered manly men, under Owen's own extremely rigid definition of manhood, a topic on which she curiously claims to be an expert. To clear up the confusion and to avoid this unfortunate misunderstanding about the fact that men have been rocking a diversity of clothing for centuries, I've made a non-exhausted list of men who aren't known for wearing the pants. Well, anywhere. That was a horrible pun, by the way. Number one, Jesus. Let's start with the classic manly man. That's right, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. According to historians, he wore a thin one-piece knee-length cloth tunic, called a chitin, was a common, I think they mean to say which was a common, undergarment for most men at their time. But because of his focus on income, redistribution, and helping the poor, another concept known for making Candace Owens gasp. <laughs> I can't stand these people. It would make sense that he wouldn't dress like the wealthier men of his time who wore fuller length tunics. If Owens wants to live in a fantasy world in which men have always and exclusively wore pants, I wouldn't recommend she visit anyone in ancient Greece or Rome where tunics were a hit with men. Which is obviously impossible because she can't go back in time. My goodness. Yeah, so how was that for a gossip column? I mean, a credible news source. Now, according to Styles in the Vogue article, he claimed that he always liked wearing female clothes and it's been an instrument to creativity. In the article, he says, Now I'll put on something that feels really flamboyant and I don't feel crazy wearing it. I think if you get something that you feel amazing in, it's like a superhero outfit. It's like a superhero outfit. Clothes are there to have fun with and experiment with and play with. What's really exciting is that all of these lines are just kind of crumbling away. When you take away, there's clothes for men and there's clothes for women. Once you remove any barriers, obviously you open up the arena in which you can play. I'll go and shop sometimes, and I just find myself looking at the women's clothes thinking they're amazing. It's like anything. Anytime you're putting barriers up in your life, you're just limiting yourself. 
There's so much joy to be had in playing with clothes. I've never really thought too much about what it means. It just becomes this extended part of creating something. So it seems like for Styles, the reason why he chooses to wear females clothes is because it's freeing to him and he enjoys the creativeness that he gets from it. Now, when it comes to Jesus wearing a dress or a chitin, as the article rightly acknowledges, what are the reasons why Jesus wore one? Now, this might sound strange to our individualistic culture, but self-expression wasn't nearly as big of a deal as it is to us today. The reason why Jesus wore a chiton was obvious. It was custom for the men and the women to wear in his day. So it wasn't used as an expression to express masculinity or femininity. Jesus didn't do it in order to break away or set himself free from some set of cultural expectations or customs. But what I will say is that breaking social customs of what was expected of men and women at the time of Christ was something that both Paul and Jesus, and actually a lot of the authors of the New Testament did engage in. They went against their cultural norms when it came to what was expected for how men and women were supposed to behave. At that time, women were considered second-class citizens. They weren't given the same rights as men. Also, when it comes to the dynamics and the interpersonal dynamics and the relationships with marriage, men were allowed to disrespect and cheat on their women, and obviously women weren't afforded those same freedoms. In fact, it was in this time and culture where women weren't considered to have equal value to that of a man that Jesus and Paul taught that women were equal in value and that men had to respect their wives and he served their wives and this was incredibly offensive in that time in fact it was actually the teachings of Christianity that put women on the trajectory to be seen as equals in society and it's because of that that Jesus and Paul made the world a much better place now this isn't to say that self-expression is inherently bad or anything like that but to compare Jesus wearing clothes that were custom during his day and comparing it to a man who's wearing culturally uncustom clothes in our day is a bad comparison just to put it mildly now that's just my two cents. Go ahead and leave yours down below. But if you'd like another brilliant example of the beautiful mind of the mob on Twitter, go ahead and check out this video where they talked about how burning Bibles is a good thing because it's white supremacy. Go ahead and see how I handled that one. So the next time you hear people comparing a man wearing a dress today with Jesus wearing a chitin, what are you gonna say? What do you mean?